And the 76ers are a team who have aspirations to go to the finals, go deep into the playoffs. And that is not going to happen at any point with, with Ben Simmons still in the organization. Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, October 26th edition of the TV on Basketball Podcast with your host, TV. Hope you're having a fantastic day and thank you for clicking on to watch or listen to today's episode. Before we start, I do have to plug my other platforms. Remember to follow at TV on Basketball on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok for updates on the podcast and for other awesome content. If you're on YouTube, remember to like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you won't miss an episode. That would be highly Highly appreciated. If for all my podcast listeners, remember to subscribe and leave a review. If you're on Apple, boost the numbers, get it out there. Thank you very much. And as for my Spotify anchor and popping listeners, just show your support in any way possible. That would be highly appreciated. I have an awesome show lined up for you today. We are basically a week into the NBA season, so we're going to be going through a series I do usually with guests on the show, but I'm going to do it by myself for this one called Hot Cold or Just Right. We're going to be going through that with some of the biggest storylines from the NBA the past week. And then I'm going to be starting a weekly um, series where I go through each team because I know I'm not going to go through each team on the podcast in depth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a segment on the show where I'm going to go through each team, but very quickly. I'm going to try to keep it like under 20 seconds each. That's my goal. So it's going to be maybe like a five to six minute portion of the show just dedicated so you can hear about each of your teams. But yeah, this is the way it's going to be for now. I'm in school right now, so I thought I could do, you know, two episodes a week. It's going to be really tough, but... I'm going to go to one episode a week, posting it every Tuesday, so be on the lookout for that. And hopefully when school dies down a little bit, when I have my breaks, we're going to be going to two episodes a week. So thank you guys so much for the support. I'm excited to be recording here once again, talking some hoops. Super excited, super engaged. Let's just get right into the first topic because there's a lot to cover on today's episode. So yeah, of course I said like in this episode we're going to be t- um, doing a series that I do usually with other guests, but I'm going to be doing it by myself today, and I'm going to be doing hot, cold, or just right, but instead of just right, I'm going to call it mid. A lot of people are calling stuff mid now if they're like okay or like like kind of average, like, and I'm going to be using that type of term instead of just right, and we're going to be calling this the one week in addition. So basically I'm going to be listing out some statements um, or some storylines that are happening in the NBA this week and then giving... A statement on it and I'm gonna say hot cold or mid on each of these statements all NBA related and this is the ones I want to go into depth with before I go into you know my 30 team stuff and all that but yeah let's get right into this there's a lot of storylines talking about the NBA a lot of stuff happening in the first week and of course we're gonna have to start off with Ben Simmons yes I hope this is over soon but we gotta start with Ben Simmons we just have to and the thing is Ben Simmons there's been a whole lot of things going on right now in the last week. There was him reporting to camp. There was him attending practice. Him getting kicked out of practice because he wasn't trying. He was suspended the game without pay. And then he, um, and then all of a sudden he came back to the team. Said he was dealing with some mental health problems. He went and apologized with the team. And they kind of, you know, at least let the air out or whatever. So at least they discussed it. But man, this whole situation is all over the place. The 76ers are still 2-1, and one, so I guess they're still, like, getting dubs. But this Ben Simmons situation looks like it's far from over. There's also that thing that's happening, like, in um, on a radio show in Philly. Daryl Morey said, look, we'll wait four years if we have to, but we're not going to trade Ben Simmons unless it's for a, a package that will help us contend. And, yeah, we're going to get into that. But the statement for this is, will Ben Simmons be traded before the end of the year? And I'm mid on this. I'm going to say mid for the first one here, and that is because I don't think Daryl Morey is bluffing, bluffing, and I don't think Ben Simmons is bluffing. It's kind of like it's a stalemate at this point between Ben Simmons and Daryl Morey, who's going to budge first, and none of them want to budge. I think it should be hard. If Daryl Morey wants to get the situation out of the way, they want to move forward with the team because this is just an ultimate distraction. They need to get him gone. They should have got him gone a month ago. I don't care if you didn't like the package. I mean, there were packages out there probably for CJ McCollum. Maybe some options there, you know, for maybe getting D'Angelo Russell and stuff like that. But you didn't pull the trigger because you didn't think that that was enough. And you know what? 
in some ways it's fine to be optimistic. Sometimes it's good to be aggressive to try and get um, a rightful return for a star talent like Ben Simmons. But what what everyone's seen in the playoffs last year, in years gone by, the lack of improvement in Ben Simmons, even though he is a very good player, and then the attitude he's just showing throughout the summer, now bleeding into the regular season, who is going to give you that package? No one. No one at this moment in the right mind is going to give you that package. And now with the stuff coming out that Ben Simmons kind of dealing with some mental health issues, I mean, I'm not going to... Um, confirm or deny if these are real or not. It's not my place to. Some people are saying, oh, he's playing the mental health card and that. We don't know. We don't know. It's best not to comment on it. We are not. We don't even have to know the full diagnosis, but if, but it does make sense after what all he's been through there in Philly. But in terms of the Ben Simmons, Daryl Moore thing, it should be hot. They, ben Simmons should be gone by now, but Daryl Moore is being too aggressive. He didn't want to pull a trigger on the James Harden trade last year. He thinks that he can still get that type of value back for Ben Simmons, but that is really just not the case. You're not going to be getting that. It's just going to hurt your team in the process. And just this looming cloud saying, is he going to come in? Is he not? Like, if he comes in, is he going to play in front of fans? Is he not? Like, there's just too many question marks here. And the 76ers are a team who have aspirations to go to the finals, go deep into the playoffs. And that is not going to happen. At any point, would, would Ben Simmons still in the organization? That's just not going to happen. So, if I'm Daryl Morey, you got to swallow your pride and move this guy. Ben Simmons, I still think, is a very good player. And yes, like, there, like maybe in years gone by, there would be a better package for sure. But not in the lowest point of his trade value. The longer you keep him around, the more it's just not going to go up. It's better to cut your losses, move on. I don't, I don't know what type of package you're gonna get back, but it's just best for the team going forward. And maybe you can move, to, make some moves to the deadline. But Daryl Morey has to swallow his ego here. This has gone on far, far too long. We've been talking about this all summer long, and he's still here. <laughs> I mean, it's still there. I don't know. I, I mean, he's still in Philly. That's basically what my point is. Why is he still there? He needs to be gone. I don't care what Daryl Morey says. You gotta get him out of there. You just have to. It's just gone on far, far too long. So yeah, for that statement, I am definitely mid on that. Just because, you know, Daryl Morey, is he going to budge? Ben Simmons, is he going to budge? It should happen, but it's probably not. So I'm going to say mid. Next up, the Los Angeles Lakers. we got to talk about these guys. And the Los Angeles Lakers, in their fir- through their first week, you know, they're 1-2. and two. They went two. They got a big win against the Memphis Grizzlies yesterday, kind of um, studying the momentum of the Grizzlies, who were two and zero before that game. And then John Morant just went off last night, forty and ten. They probably I don't know if the Lakers would have won in overtime if Jaw hit that last free throw, but yeah, it's just been a rough week for the Warriors. They've had you know scuffles on the bench and stuff like that, um, issues with the fans, LeBron yelling at Cameron Payne, telling like humble yourself and all that. It's it's been a very like controversial week for the for the Lakers. So here's my statement. The Lakers are not making it to the finals. And if I had to say it, if I'm hot, cold, or mid on it, I'm mid. Yes, I know. Back-to-back points, I'm mid. Don't worry. I'll change after this. But the Lakers are just, like, in the same position. Like, the, the concerns I had coming into the season, they're still there. The fit is just ugly. The fit is ugly. Russell Westbrook probably had his best game for the Lakers yesterday. But man, this season so far, he is it's been rough. 12 points, eight, basically nine assists, eight um rebounds, 34% from the field, 9% from three, 41% at the line. Extremely rough start for Russell Westbrook. LeBron's been good. AD's been good. Carmelo was the big difference maker in last night's game. But this is the problem when you have a bunch of veterans on one team. And you try to like get them all to work. It's just this is too many egos right now on this team as well. The fit's not there. They don't have the type of shooters around LeBron like he's had in years past. They have Russell Westbrook instead. But then you have all these veterans, and going into the season, they have the highest average age of anyone in the league. I believe they're like thirty-one or something like that. And then you bring in the veterans back: Dwight Howard, DeAndre Jordan, Rajon Rondo. Avery Bradley, Trent Bazemore. These are all veterans who have been in the league for a long time. 
there's going to be a bunch of egos clashing. And we've seen that throughout this week. I mean, like I mentioned earlier, a bunch of scuffles happened. The Dwight AD and the, and the timeout huddle, they were shoving each other and stuff like that. And we're like, what the heck is going on? Then the whole Rondo and the fan situation, you got Rondo kind of doing a finger gun at the fan. And the fan, as any human, even myself would, if someone was like doing this in my face, I would move their finger out the way. He's like, what are you doing? The fan did that, and Doris Burke was like defending like Rondo, and stuff like that. I mean, whatever. But this just feels like there's a lot of dysfunction in this locker room. The fit was gonna be hard in the first place, and this so this season so far, it's proving my point. And I just not sure if Frank Hogel, Vogel can withstand this for a full 82 games. This is only game three, and all this stuff happened in the span of the first week of the NBA season. Will this get better? Of course it will. It's it's very hard. Like as like Dwight and AD said afterwards, they had to talk it over. They're good now. They're brothers. Whatever. But what the, what doesn't change is the fit. What doesn't change is the roster they have constructed right now, who had a bunch of question marks coming into the season, and none of them like and the people who are doubting it, they're licking their chaps right now. People are like hmm hmm hmm. We knew this wasn't gonna work, and although they have a win against the Grizzlies, which is a good win nonetheless. It hasn't looked good for the Lakers. It definitely hasn't. But the reason I met on this is that it's still LeBron. It's still Anthony Davis. They still got the talent there. It it, it, it They have the talent to make it work. They have talent. And for me, the, the, the way the things change, and I think you could see it a bit in yesterday's game, is trying to limit the minutes that AD, LeBron, and Westbrook share the floor together. Because Westbrook and Braun, both are primary ball handlers. Both of them on the same court at the same time. One's going to suffer. So what you do is have Westbrook or Braun play either with the bench unit, with the supporting cast, have shooters around them, do whatever. And then other times, if you want to do that, have them paired up with AD. Have two of, like, have LeBron or Westbrook pair with AD. Or have them go by themselves. Because that's the only way, like, I think throughout the game this is going to work. And I'm even, like, questionable of having Westbrook at the end of games. But at the end of the day, they have the talent. They have people with championship, players with championship mentality. AD has been there, Dwight, um, LeBron. You have, and you have a um, championship winning head coach in Frank Vogel. But they need to do something about this roster. I don't know if that's trading Westbrook or not because I think that LeBron's still fully on board with having Westbrook here. AD is. They want to make it work. But we'll get to a point where we're near the trade deadline. The Lakers are like a fifth, fourth seed, and not much has changed. I mean, sure, they're probably still going to be over 500. They're still going to be a, a playoff team no matter what. But going into the playoffs, is LeBron going to look at the kind of look around at the roster saying, this is just not going to work, and then do something like he did with Cleveland, you know, in 2018, where they completely just revamped the roster, retooled the roster midseason. If things go like the way that I've seen this first week, I could definitely see that happening. But whether it happens or not, we'll have to wait and see because I really do think the Lakers, LeBron, AD, want to make it work with Westbrook and the rest of these guys. But it's going to reach a breaking point. I'm not saying it's going to happen. Like, like I said, it's only been one week. But it will be a breaking point if this continues to go on like this. And we're going to have to see when it is. But in terms of the Lakers and then we get to the finals, I'm mid. It's LeBron. You can't always, you can't fully take him out of the conversation. But with the Lakers team as a whole, do I think this is a championship slash finals roster? I don't. I really don't. The only thing keeping their head above water is the fact they have LeBron and AD. And you're relying on AD who's made of glass. And you have LeBron who's that 37-year-old who has been in the league for, what, 18 seasons now? It's a lot to rely on those two guys. It's a lot. Next, if you've been listening to my, pod- uh, to my TikToks and all that, you know... I'm going to talk about this all season long. As long as the hype change is going on, people are talking about, um, what's it called, winning MIP. You have people talking about Miles Bridges winning MIP. You have people talking Michael Porter Jr. might win MIP. You know before the season I had this guy winning MIP, and I'm going to be riding that train all season long. Let's talk about John Morant. John Morant. And I'm going to get this out of the way. The statement is, will John Morant win MIP? I am hot. I am hot on this. John Morant has looked phenomenal, F- absolutely phenomenal to start the season. If you had to rank point guards based on these like first week, John Morant's definitely top three. This guy is definitely top three. He has played at an absolutely high level. 
so far this season, 35 points a game, 8 assists, 4 rebounds, 58% from the field, 44% from 3, 81% at the free throw line. I mean, he, he kind of missed that free throw near the end to tie the game. But whatever. He still had 40 and 10 last night. But John Morant and the Grizzlies, I'm telling you guys. I said before the season, like one of my bold picks is that the Grizzlies, for the first time in like a while, they're going to avoid the play-in. And I think they'll be a top six seed. And so far, I'm very confident in that pick. Because not only is John Morant taking his game to a whole nother stratosphere, people are helping him out around him. I mean, Jaron Jackson Jr. hasn't really gone to that point yet where he's been like extremely, extremely reliable, but he's gonna he'll get there. But they're getting production from DeAnthony Melton, who has been a great backup, um, a backup to John Morant, and also maybe sometimes playing um, side by side with him. You got that. You got Stephen Adams playing very well, thirteen and thirteen to start the season. There's been Bain helping you out. Um, scoring 19 points a game so far. And then the bench will come around. The bench will come around. But the thing is here is that they have a superstar guy. Am I kind of reaching so far? I don't think so. Because we've seen this potential in Jaw for the longest time. And I think when Jaw finally arrived was last year's playing tournament going into the play and the playoffs. Sure, they lost in five, but John Moran showed that he has... Like that superstar capabilities, and he's carrying it on to this season. He's improved in so many areas. He's still a solid defender. I'm always worried when he lands because I'm always uh, just like I was a huge, huge Zeros fan. I hope that injuries won't stop John Morant knocking on wood. But Jaws looking great. He's sh- like, in my opinion, he's the number one guy for MIP right now. And some people are like, like I've seen on Twitter, on like Twitter and Instagram, people. We're talking about John Morant winning. He's like, oh, we already knew he was good in this and that. But most improved, taking your game from here to here, John Morant is going from a great point guard to like all NBA, all star level. If he can, I'm not, of course, he's not going to keep up 35 points a game, but if he can get to that 24 25 range, nine assists a game, eight assists, good shooting percentages, he's definitely in that mix. And the Grizzlies looking so far looking great. I think they have great defensive intensity. I mean, they've their number their last in defensive rating right now, but I think that'll turn around. But they have already tied for the best offense so far. Their offense is going to be great. I just think their defense just needs to, you know, kind of tighten up a little bit. But I think they'll um, look better eventually. But they got their guy. They got their guy in Jaw. He's going to lead this team, and I'm very, very excited. Very, very excited to see him how he does going forward and for this Grizzlies team for sure. John Red MIP. You know I'm hot on that, but I'm also hot on these Grizzlies. Next, we're going to talk about the Chicago Bulls because they have had probably the perfect start to the season, like the most ideal situation for them. They're 3-0. They're 3-0 to start the season. Um, they've looked really fun. They looked, Their offense looks elite. Zach Levine had two 30-plus point games. Had one stinker in between, but the good thing about that is that he has DeMar DeRozan to help him out there, and then he scored 21 in that game. Caruso has looked great. Lonzo has looked fantastic. And although Vucevic is kind of starting the season off slow, I think he'll get back to his form sooner rather than later. But my statement, the Bulls will be a top five seed. I'm still cold on that. And the reason I'm cold on that is I'm still, I still need like a bigger sample size, which is Chicago Bulls. Because although they are 3-0, they faced the Pelicans team with no Zion, and that team looks like a group of headless chickens trying to figure out what to do because they just do not look like a a complete basketball team whatsoever and then they got to face the Pistons twice they got to face the Pistons twice on opening week and sure I mean yeah of course they should win but the good thing is is that the Bulls have looked at least solid defensively and their offense is as good as advertised sure they had two games under 100 points but that um, flurry against the Pelicans whereas Lonzo had a triple double where Zach Levine um, had 32 points, DeMar, 26. We see the potential there. Now, as we go into the season, we're going to maybe see um, their true colors. Tonight, I'm going to the Raptors game where it's us, where it's the Raptors versus Chicago Bulls. That's going to be interesting to see. But then after that, you got the Knicks, you got the Jazz, you got the Celtics, you got the 76ers twice, the Brooklyn Nets, the Dallas Mavericks, the Warriors, the Clippers, the Lakers, the Blazers, the Nuggets, the Knicks, the Pacers, and then you got the Rockets and Magic. 
<laughs> but either way, that is a, like, what, a 10-game stretch where they're going to face elite-level competition? This is where they're going to show their true colors. Now, I'm not hoping for them to do wrong, but this is where we're going to actually see what this team is made of. Of course, they're still in a transition period. They're still trying to figure out how to play well as a team. But if they can show me here that they can compete with these teams, if they can win a couple games here and there, and they're like over 500 comfortably, then I'm going to start believing. Then I'm going to start believing. But I'm cold right now just because the competition is going to take, is going to really go from here to here. And it's all about how they respond. But I do like a lot of things so far. Like I said, the defense hasn't been horrible. They've been actually, honestly, one of the best in the league so far, third in the league. And their offense has shown their potential. But how are they going to do against these next teams? What I like about the Bulls, though, Zach Levine, he had one off night, but the other guys um, made up for it. And that really couldn't happen these last few years with Zach Levine's number one guy. But now he has help on the offensive end. The defense looking a bit better. Billy Donovan has has endless possibilities with the lineups he could do. It's looking good. But for the Bulls being a top seed right now, I'm completely like holding my brakes. And I'm going to be making my like true decision a bit more into the future. Not right now, but just give it some more time. Let's wait for that. Next, we got, we're going to be talking about my Toronto Raptors, and this one should be pretty quick, but Scotty Barnes, man. Scotty Barnes. The Raptors are 1-2 right now. Um, their half-court offense has looked trash, plain and simple. Their defense has actually looked pretty solid. The defense has looked pretty solid. They're top 10 right now in the league, but their offense looks bad. They're bottom five, but the biggest, I think, the most excited I am for this team right now is is seeing how well Scotty Barnes is playing. And here's my um, statement. Scotty Barnes will win Rookie of the Year. I'm mid. I'm not going to say I'm cold. I'm not going to say I'm hot. I'm mid right now. And here's why. Scotty Barnes this season has shown that he could do a little bit of everything. His three-point shot is not there yet, but at least he's taking them. He wants to improve in that aspect. But in his three games right now, averaging 18 points a game, 10 rebounds, Two assists a game, 50% from the field, 75% from the free throw line. And just being everywhere. And I mean everywhere on the defensive end. This guy has been great. Especially that game against Boston where the Raptors trashed him by 32. 25 points, 13 rebounds, 2 assists. Hit a 3. Great shooting percentages. Scotty Barnes looked phenomenal in that game. Now while I think he win Rookie of the Year, that's going to be tough. Because Evan Mobley has looked good. Chris Duarte has been good. Jalen Green might finally turn it around, and we still haven't seen Cade yet. But I think Scotty should be in that mix. He definitely should be. He does so many good things well. And Jason Kidd said after the Mavericks game, even though the Mavericks lost, he's high on Scotty Barnes. He's high on Scotty Barnes. He thinks he could do it like he's everywhere in the basketball court. He has such a huge impact offensively and defensively. And as a Raptor fan, I could see all of that. We see everything there. His ball handling skills is like very good for someone who's only in his first season. And and I'm hoping in the future that Scotty can transition kind of into that number one ball handler. Maybe have Van Vliet off the ball, Gary Trent and stuff like that, and let Scotty, you know, take advantage of mismatches, have him set up others because he has great passing ability, great rebounding ability, and he you can you're comfortable with him dribbling the ball. But him rookie of the year, I mean I don't even know. I hope he starts. I mean, I hope he starts when Siakam comes back, but that's not really a guarantee. Um, is he going to get enough minutes and get enough touches? I don't know. But I want Scotty, as the season goes on, his, gro- his role to go bigger. I want him to have more opportunities, and I want to see him play well. I'm excited to see him play tonight against the Bulls. But I want to see him, you know, go up against Zach Zachovine, take on that challenge against the DeMar DeRozan and all that. I want to see him mostly more than anything to kind of improve on those, like show what he's great at at the game and then improve on the other aspects like his three-point shot is off, like his scoring ability. As long as I see that, I'm happy with it. But I think that he does have rookie day potential if he continues to get opportunities. Whether he does or not, we'll have to wait and see. But yeah, in terms of Scotty Barnes winning rookie of the year, I'm mid. Next topic we're going to be discussing is the Golden State Warriors. And just like the Bulls two topics ago, the, Bull- the Warriors are undefeated. The Warriors are undefeated right now. They are 3-0. and They got a good win against the Sacramento Kings last night. Steph Curry, 27 points, 10 assists, um, 7 rebounds. He's been very good. He And congratulations to him as well, reaching 5,000 assists. Very good on him. Um, And 
my 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 basically my um statement on them is will they make the conference finals is because they have looked really good. But my um but if I'm hot, cold or mid <laughs> this is kind of a boring answer, but I'm mid. I'm mid. And the reason I'm mid is that you could still see with the Warriors right now that they still have a good defensive mentality. They're like right in the middle of the pack in terms of defense, but the mentality is still there. I mean, obviously, Steve Kerr has led some very good defenses with the Warriors, um, especially when they were the um, the dynasty the dynasty Warriors a couple years ago. But the good thing is, and like they're three and zero, Steph has looked great, but the rest of the bench has looked great as well. Jordan Poole so far this season, he was great in this um, in the preseason. Bring it over here is averaging 17 points a game, which is second on the team right now. You got Wiggins um, chipping in 15, 12 points from Damian Lee. And then people like Iguodala has looked good. Kavon Looney, Nemanja Bialica. Gary Payton had 10 points yesterday, when, which was key for them. Otto Porter. And this is not even mentioning the people who are not even playing right now. I mean, Moody, I mean, Moody hasn't really figured it out just yet, but hopefully he can get into the rotation soon. But you're still waiting on Kaminga. You're still waiting on Wiseman, and you're still waiting on Clay. Clay, we know what he's about, but coming off of injury, that's going to be interesting to see how he comes back. But in terms of Kaminga and um, Wiseman, they have these are two guys that can really have an impact defensively if they commit to the system, and then hopefully they can get their offensive touches as well. But looking at the team, the the team just looks like a m- much um, better you know unit. They look, they look like they play better together. And then adding in those guys like coming off of injury is only going to help them on both ends of the court because Steph doesn't have to do everything. He's getting at least help from people like Jordan Poole and then other guys like helping it around him is going to be good. The question is, how how much are the Warriors going to invest in this season? Because everyone has been waiting for them to do like pull off that trade with like a Wiseman, Kaminga, Moody, and trading for that third you know score, third star, this and that. Will that happen? I'm not sure. But right now, it's looking good for the Warriors because Steph can dominate. But when he goes to the bench, they're just not completely out of the mud. They got some guys that can score it, some guys that can create their own offense. And they're playing for each other. They're playing decent on the defensive end. They've looked good. They've looked good. And I'm very high on them right now. Um, Yeah, I think this Warriors is a, is a good team. I'm mid on them making the conference finals already. I hope I think we have to see more past this first week, but they look good. They definitely look good, and I'm excited to see more Steph Curry this season. Last but not least, in my hot quarter or mid segment, we gotta talk about the NBA 75 list, and I I'm happy. I'm happy in the sense where basically the 50 you guys from the 19 uh, the 50th anniversary list is still there, but in terms of the 25 or 20, well, 26 new names, I got 24 of them right. I got 24 of them right, but the only thing I got wrong, I'm pretty pissed with. Dwight Howard didn't make the list. And here's my statement. Dwight Howard was the biggest NBA 75 snub. And I am burning hot on that. I am burning hot on that take. And the thing is, I mean, the one person that they have that I didn't have was Dame. That's the one person I believe that they had that I didn't have. But... In terms of Dwight Howard not making it, it's honestly unacceptable. I I, I was trying to think of ways. I'm like, why did – is there a reason why they – like, like I'm just trying to look at – I was just trying to look like, why didn't he make it? Like, I'm still baffled right now. And I'm looking at it. And I'm when I remember doing this list with Jalen from the Hoop Talk podcast, we were like – I mean, he was kind of skeptical on it just because of the last few years. And I think the voters had the same mindset as him. Because I think they just completely forgot how dominant this guy was in his prime. Eight-time All-NBA. I'm going to say this again. Three-time Defensive Player of the Year. Um, Eight-time All-Star. Two-times Blocks Champion. Five-time Rebound Champ. Five-time All-Defensive Team. This guy was a top-five player for half a decade. For half a decade, this guy was a top-five player. This guy was always top-five in MVP um, conversations. He led a Magic team to the NBA Finals in 2009. How does this not qualify for an NBA 75 position? And my only explanation is, <laughs> no one likes him. None of the, the vote, he just doesn't have a good rep with the voters. And I don't think that should be the case when it comes to this, but what what other explanation do you have? Dwight Howard has the resume to be above people. I mean, Dave made the list. 
Dave made the list. I mean, as much as I love Dave, I love his highlights. I would have Dwight over him. Anthony Davis, the guy he gone to a spat with the other day. Some people were making jokes that they were arguing about the NBA 75 list, but, you know, forget that. But I would have Dwight over Anthony Davis at this very moment. I think Dwight deserves to be on that list over Anthony Davis. So there's just two names, and I just, I'm just looking at it, and I'm like, oh, man. I, he really should have made it. For me, he was a lock. He was an absolute lock. And watching him throughout like the like my years as a kid, seeing like like this guy was basically lived above the rim. This guy was just dominant on, had such a huge impact offensively and defensively for those Magic teams. He was such a good player. And the fact that he, I, I know it's been rough, you know, this last half a decade, this last six, seven years. But that shouldn't take away from the greatness that he showed in those years with Orlando. Those year, like before he moved to you know the Lakers and Houston and stuff like that, he was a beast. Did he handle things wrong? Yes. Did did he kind of just like bounce around and just completely ruin his reputation? Yes. But that doesn't take away what how good he's done. It's not like he committed like a murder or something. Like they like blacklisting him. Like he did like have this huge sexual assault case and all that. He just kind of had a bad ad. Maybe he had a bad attitude. I mean, he's been like rehabilitating his image. These last few years with the Lakers and the Spur- and the 76ers and all that, but it's not like he like committed some like crazy crime. It's it's like he like he just kind of didn't take things too seriously like there in the mid to like 2010s. But he has a championship. He has that resume. He 100 percent should have made it in. He 100 percent should have made it in, and I'm I'm pissed about it. I'm pissed about it. Obviously, we're not gonna talk about this like in the next episode and all that. But man, he really should have been on it. That's why I'm hot on this. He really should have been on that team. Sorry, Dwight. He, he he's definitely not listening to this, but he definitely should have made it. Other guys, just to like name a few that probably that some people say got snubbed. Kyrie, I didn't think it was enough. Um, a lot of people thought he should have. I guess talent wise, yes, he doesn't have the resume. Clay Thompson, he was very pissed that he didn't make it, but I didn't have him on either. I just think that these last couple years that he missed kind of like hurt his chances. On making that, Vince Carter, Tracy McGrady. If anything, I, I wish that Vince Carter did make it in, um, but sadly he didn't. But yeah, this whole Dwight Howard thing, man. This whole Dwight Howard thing does um, is is just unfortunate. It really just is unfortunate. Um, and, but at least I got a lot of them right. It's just damn, damn. Dwight should have made it. Dwight just should have made it. But yeah, those are my hot cold. Uh, mid takes let me know down below what you guys think are you hot cold or mid on any of the takes i just said let me know down below and just tell me if you're enjoying the season or not we'll definitely have some good conversation there and now to end the episode i'm going to be trying out this new series like i mentioned off the top of the show it's a series i like to call each nba team as quick as possible i guess i, I was gonna say in three words but i'm gonna do maybe like a short snippet of each team as well just because i can't cover all teams but i'm gonna try to <laughs> I'm going to try to, but I'm not going to go long on each. Some teams, obviously, I've mentioned here already, like beforehand. But I'm going to go through each of these teams. And I'm basically going to talk about how I just feel about them in a very quick take. Um, just for each of them. Hopefully, I don't go long on this. Right now, we are, what, 33 minutes into the pod? 32 minutes? Hopefully, this doesn't go past 40 minutes. I really do hope so. I'm going to try to keep these short and sweet. Um, and let's do this. Let's start. I'm basically going to be going through the NBA standings right now as of today and just going through it like that. So whoever is number one is going first and this and that. Let's go into it. Let's start with the East. Number one East right now, the Bulls. Buckets come easy. Those are the three words to describe them. They showed their potential on offense. I already looked, I already uh, talked about this. And their defense has been good so far this season. It's Now it's about them trying to go forward against um, tougher competition because their last week was really easy. Now they have to take it up to a to another level let's see if they're gonna if they're gonna prove us wrong or is it gonna come rough for them we'll have to wait and see the knicks right now they're two and one and so far if i have three words to describe them not a fluke they're a very good team julius randall is carrying over that momentum from his mip season and although kemba walker hasn't been looking good you still got guys like producing at a high level evan fournier averaging almost 20 points a game derrick rose playing well off the bench rj barrett They've looked good, but Julius Randle is their star guy. They got to continue to feed him, continue to play with that hard defense that Thibodeau, that Thibodeau always had to talk about. They look good. They're not a fluke. The Washington Wizards, they're low key good. 
They're 2 0 right now to start the season. They got a big win against the Pacers without Bradley Beal. And you're just getting good production from different players. I mean, Spencer Dinwiddie, so far, great start to the season. Getting good production from Montres Hero. Kyle Kuzma has been looking good. And Beal, like, missed the last game, too, and they still got the win. So, you know, I said they were going to miss on the play in, but I'm not going to be surprised if they do make it. They have some talent there. I'm excited to see what they do for the rest of the season. Charlotte Hornets, must watch basketball. Yes, must watch basketball. You got Lons, they got a mellow ball playing at a very high level, looking like one of the best passers in basketball. Miles Bridges, who had back to back thirty point games over the weekend, um, again, and one of them against the Nets, which is a very very massive. This team is good. My only issue for them is their center position. Um, Mason Plumlee is their starting center. Past that, you got people like Kai Jones. You're gonna have to move PJ Washington to center. It's looking rough there, but. They're a fun team. If you haven't already, please watch the Hornets. They're so fun to watch. The Milwaukee Bucks. Three words to describe them. They need health. Giannis has still been healthy. Chris Milton has been healthy. But they're still missing on DiVincenzo. They're missing on Portis. Lopez is going to be out for a bit. Drew Holiday. They just need those guys back. They're going to be fine. They just need those guys back. But the Bucks have looked good. They definitely still look good. They got trashed by the Heat on Thursday night. But that's all good. They just, Bucks just need health. Brooklyn Nets. No fouls called. And I was going to try to make this like a, a thing for like earlier on in the episode 2 as a hot, cold, mid segment. But I'm going to do this really quickly. Harden has been has had trouble um, adjusting to the new rule. Steve Nash is calling out the refs on it. He's been calling out the refs. But James Harden, whether you think that like, he doesn't deserve to be the poster boy child for this or that, he's definitely got away with some controversial falls um, before in the shooting stuff. He wants the refs to call it as they see it, but... They've been taught a new way. He just has to adjust. I still think I think he will, but it's definitely been rough for him so far. Katie's been the one consistent force for them. He's been phenomenal, but the rest of the team has looked rough, and that includes Harden. That includes Harden. He's gonna need to adjust, and I, mean, I hate to say this, but just like stop complaining. This is like it's been really helpful throughout the entire league. Um, maybe they kind of like let him play too much, but at the same time, they've overdone it the last few years, so he's got to adjust. Seventy Sixers. Trade Simmons now. I went for it long enough there. They got Trade Simmons now. They need to move off this and start fresh. Miami Heat, made of glass. And I'm not talking about their team or the players that they have. I mean, yes, Kyle Lowry missed a game like this weekend. But same with my concerns before the season. I just think that one injury to one of the main components of their team. And I think they're it's going to be a rough season for them. I mean, say if Bam gets injured, Jimmy, Kyle, even Tyler, Tyler Hero. Like, some of those guys, if they go out with injury, it's going to be tough because they don't have much depth on that team. And uh, I just think that they're, they're going to be a good team in the playoffs, but they just got to stay healthy. And with the lack of depth they have, it's just there's just something to worry about. Maybe it's not going to happen, but it's something to look out for. Next, Hawks. Too much depth. This team has just too much depth right now. They are a great team. They did lose to the um, Cleveland Cavaliers over the weekend, which is definitely a rough loss. But at this point, they got too many... You know, playable pieces. I think if you like, um, you know, combine a few of them, put them into a trade, and upgrade like one of their starting positions, I think that would be a lot more beneficial to the team. But we're gonna have to wait and see. I still think they're gonna be like a top five, top four seed in the East. But I just think for the betterment of the team, and if they want to go further into the playoffs, they got to, you know, cut down on the depth and maybe improve areas of their starting lineup. Next, Cleveland Cavaliers. What we got next? The Cavs have definitely. Um, not look good this, like this in the early stage of the season so far, but one of their bright spots, Evan Mobley, Evan Mobley as like a the number three overall pick, 15 points a game, eight rebounds, three assists. He's switching on the perimeter, playing great defense. They've got someone there. They've got someone special there, and I'm excited to see how he does for the rest of the season. Raptors, run, run, run. That's the way they're going to develop offense. They've been good on the defensive end. I'm excited to see how their defense shapes up. But their offense, offense looks, uh, especially in the half court, look absolutely horrible. The way they're going to win, the way we're going to win, is they're going to have to run, run, run. And I hope to see more of that throughout the season. Pacers, the unluckiest team. In the first week of the season, the Pacers just had some cra- like, like just crazy um, unluckiness, you know. They lost. They gave up a 23-point lead to the, to, the, um, to the Hornets in their first game. And then they lost by one to the Wizards without Bradley Beal, even though Miles Turner scored 40 points. But they finally did get a win over the Heat. Sabonis has looked good. Chris Duarte, the rookie, has looked good. They possibly can make the play in, but 
Again, another one of the scenes where an injury is just waiting to happen. I don't know if they can like hold up for 82 games. And there's just a lot of like East teams who are more exciting, just better than them, to be honest. Pistons, Cade, come back. Cade, please come back. No one wants to watch the Pistons if Cade isn't on the team. I know he's dealing with an injury, but hopefully he can come back soon and we can see him on the court, man. Because the Pistons team looks rough. Definitely looks rough. Celtics, Ainge messed up. <laughs> Ainge messed up, man. I mean... The Celtics have ha, did right getting Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum. They're good. Marcus Smart too. But the fact that the that um, Ainge didn't pull any triggers on like draft picks, like giving away his draft picks for you know star plays and all that, improving the roster, is showing, man. And I just do not have high expectations for this team. Tatum's great. Brown, Brown's great. Great. The rest of the roster is just not doing it for me. It's just not doing it for me. Robert Williams, I think, is still going to be a good player. Marcus Smart will do his thing. Just not really a big fan of the roster. I'm really not. And Magic, guaranteed bottom seed. They they got a win yesterday. They did get a win. Cole Anthony played great. But more than anything, they got to continue to tank. Um, try to figure out how who they want to build around with Suggs. They got Cole Anthony. They got um, Wendell Carter. Just figure out who they want to play. That's it. Moving on to the West. Hopefully we can get through this quickly. The Utah Jazz. Business as usual. The Utah Jazz... Are just right now. They're um, one of the teams that are th- um, still undefeated. They're two and zero. They're just doing their job. Gobert's averaging over twenty rebounds a game. Absolutely dominating on the glass. Donovan Mitchell's doing his thing. The rest of his team know what they're doing. They've done this before. They're just a good regular season team. Grizzlies, jaw for MIP. End of story. Golden State Warriors. Curry has help. Curry, like like I mentioned earlier. Curry's doing extremely well this season, but he has definitely pieces where when he goes on the bench, it's not horrible. The bench definitely like held the fort down, especially in yesterday's game. And that's good news for the Warriors because as they continue to get more guys back from injury, it's good to know that their um, supporting pieces can be reliable. Timberwolves, top 10 offense. Um, in their first game, they were absolutely fantastic on the offensive end. Last game, not so much, but they did win the game in a defensive effort, which is really, really good. But that combo of Cat... Anthony Edwards and D'Angelo Russell, I think they're going to be a fun trio to watch out this season. Be on the for them. They're going to be a fun team to watch. The Nuggets, two slept on. I, I've heard no one talk about the Nuggets, but Nikola Jokic is still playing absolutely fantastic. They're 2-0 right now. Um, Michael Porter Jr. hasn't really got things going just yet, but it's only been two games. Can't really call me on that. But Jokic has looked phenomenal. Will Barnes helping out on the offensive end. This team is still going to be really good. This team is going to be still really good, but I just don't understand why no one's talking about them. Sacramento Kings, why is Luke Walton still here? Or why is Luke here? Should have got rid of him years ago. Um, this seems still kind of a mess. I don't know how Buddy Heald is still on this roster. I'm a fan of Davion Mitchell. I'm a fan of, you know, Fox, Howard Burden, Rashawn Holmes, and all that. Harrison Barnes has been their best player this year so far. But this team's going nowhere. This team's going nowhere. I don't know why Luke Walton's still there. I just don't get it. Trailblazers. Billups changed culture. culture. Last year, the Blazers were bottom two in defense. And you could just tell, especially in that last game that the, the Blazers won against the Phoenix Suns. They played tough on the defensive end. They really did. And I think that's just the mentality of the coach of um, Chauncey Billups, a, be- a very good defensive guard in the early 2000s. I just think that that's going to like help them out a lot. I don't know if that's going to like take them to like a whole other level or something. But if they can you know, pr- produce a top 15 defense, that will definitely help out their chances going forward. But we're going to have to see how they do um, throughout the season. Very good offensively. They're definitely getting better defensively. Um, Trailblazers should be a fun team to watch, as always. The Rockets. They're a fun. They're a fun team. Alperen Schengen, I'm a big fan of his. Jalen Green had 30 points in, um, on Sunday's game, including eight threes. Kevin Porter Jr. is fun to watch. They're probably going to be bottom two in the West, but they're going to be fun to watch. At least they'll be fun to watch. Dallas Mavericks. What's up, kid? The offense, you know, Luka's doing his thing. He's going to do his thing no matter what. But the offense says, for a team who has always been, like, near top of offense the last couple years, it doesn't look as promising this year. And by the way, Junior's played great. Chris has been okay. Dodge is doing his thing. Jason Kidd, it, it hasn't looked good to start off the, um, the season so far. Hopefully, he can change things up. The defense is still kind of suspect. But I'm going to give him time. I'm going to give him time. But it's definitely questionable to start off the season. The Phoenix Suns. Teams are ready. All I'm going to say is that um, the t- this Phoenix Suns caught a lot of teams off guard last year. They didn't. They weren't sure how good or bad this team was going to be. 
So they were, they didn't know what to expect. Now teams are ready for you, and they got to be ready for expectations now. Because like myself, I had them as a top two seed. I think I had them number one. There's expectations with them now, and they how have to live up to them. Um, San Antonio Spurs, new era waiting. They have some good young guys there. Kellen Johnson looks good. Devin Vassell. They've looked good so far to start the season. But this is basically a swan song for Popovich. I think this is definitely going to be his last season. And hopefully he can, you know, spread some wisdom, spread some good words for the Spurs team going forward. And hopefully, you know, they can take that and hope and whoever's taking over is next can um, move forward with this team with, you know, the, um, the teachings that Pop had. The LA Clippers won't back down. Yes, they're 0-2, but in both the games, they have been highly, highly competitive. Paul George has looked great um, in his two games, averaging 35 points between the two, including 10 rebounds. You got some gang, some good production from Eric Bledsoe, Reggie Jackson, Terrence Mann doing okay this season. I think this is going to be a, a good team to watch. I think they will make the play-in at the very least. But no matter who they face on every any given night, they're going to be a tough out no matter what. So be on the lookout for the Clippers. I mean, whether you're the Lakers, whether you're the Brooklyn Nets, they're going to be a tough t- um, team to face every night. Lakers, too many egos. Talked about them enough earlier in the episode. I just think they got to they got to sort things out. They got to fix it like internally. Um, yeah, I'm just just not really a fan of the fit. Basically, that's it. Also, one last thing before we move on to the next team. Congratulations to Kamaru Anthony for passing Moses Malone and going into ninth all time in scoring. Congratulations, Melo. OKC Thunder, the perfect tank. Last year they were too good for their own good and they missed out on a top pick of in this year's draft. But that's fine. They got Josh Kiddy. He's looked good this season. Shea has looked good this season as well. What I need to see now is just them staying competitive, but them still losing games. And that, for me, is the perfect tank. Last but not least, the New Orleans Pelicans. No fun, Zion. Zion Williamson hasn't been on the team. They're worried because he has reached over 300 pounds the last time they checked him. That's definitely worrisome, especially for a guy who um, relies a lot on his athleticism. That's definitely something to look out for. But this team just does not look good without Zion whatsoever. This team is definitely like hard to watch. Ryan Ingram is still giving them some offense, 27 points a game. Valentin is doing good. Nikhil Alexander-Walker is doing good. But then you're going to get games with Devontae, Devontae Graham where he's going to play well. But then you got the last game where he just played absolutely horrible. And by horrible, I mean 2 for 14 shooting, 1 for 10 from threes. Looking rough. No Zion, no fun. But yeah, went to each NBA team. I think that was just... Um, like about like 13 14 minutes but let me know down below what you guys think of this episode what you guys think of the of the segment before just talk about it in the comment section below but yeah i think this is working on today's episode thank you guys for watching or listening remember to show love on all the podcast channels like share subscribe hit the notification bell if you're on youtube and remember to follow our tv on basketball on twitter facebook instagram and tiktok for just stuff going on in the future up- updates on the podcast and for just awesome, awesome content Going to be back next Tuesday with another episode to talk some NBA hoops. Going to talk about each NBA team like I hope to do every single week. And again, just thank you guys for all the support you've been giving. I'm excited for this NBA season. Watching a lot. Let's hope that they're going to continue to deliver. But yeah, this is where we're going to end it. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you have a fantastic day. Take it easy, guys. TV signing out. Peace.